behalf of the Wall Street Journal, I want to just say welcome to you all. Welcome to Journal House. Glad to see such a full room. We're going to have a tremendous discussion. Hello and welcome to this special session here at the World Economic Forum in Davos, where we're going to be talking about an incredibly interesting technological development. Now, I'm talking about generative AI, a revolutionary concept that has the power to change the way we work and possibly the way we think. I'm Philip Leighton Jones, Senior Vice President of the Trust at the Wall Street Journal, and I'm pleased to be here with Jessica Apoteka, CMO of BCG, who will share her expertise on this subject. Jessica, I'm so happy to have you here. Thanks for being here. Thank you so much for having me. So um, AI and Gen AI are obviously the talk of the town here in Davos. Yes. And BCG recently carried out a survey of over 1,400 C-suite executives on how AI is playing out in real world business. What does this reveal about the pace of engagement with generative AI? So what that survey shows is one very, very strong enthusiasm from the corporate world. We see uh, more than eight out of 10 of executives who say it's one of their top three priorities and one out of seven say they want to invest even more in 2024 than they have in the past. However, it also shows that this is still really small scale. Mm -hmm. Nine out of 10 of all execs say, I've just started experimenting. This is really early stage in the maturity curve. And so what are companies describing as their biggest challenges in the context of AI? So I want to be a little provocative there because I think companies are actually raising the wrong challenges. When you talk to corporates and you see in a survey, the number one thing on everybody's mind is data privacy and security. I'm not saying that's not a real issue, but I think there are ways of tackling that that are well controlled. However, there are a lot of other issues that are much less top of mind. For example, upskilling, how much you have to train your workforce, what is the right tech stack to actually be successful at scale, how do you manage the cost of the technology. These are not top of mind enough. Are the investments companies have made already beginning to pay off or is it all in the distant future? Well, I think when you look at the survey, there's really two camps here. They're the winners and they are already starting to see meaningful impact today. They're saying they're seeing impact north of 10% of cost efficiency across the board and also top line impact. And then they're the observers and they haven't seen much yet in their bottom line. For those businesses ready to dive in, how do they get started? Well, there's a couple of things you should be doing. One, you should be thinking about uh, what are the big applications that can get you to large outcomes at scale? You don't want this to be a separate transformation. You want this to be core to your business. That would be thing one. Thing two, you need to think forward about your tech. What is going to be the right tech stack to maintain that? What is the right ecosystem choices that you need to make? Three, you need to think about people, 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 people. When you look at the survey, only 6% of companies have trained more than 25% of their staff. Basically nobody. <laughs> right. So you need to really think thoughtfully of how you're going to embark your organization, train them, and rethink your operating model. And last but absolutely not least, responsible AI. What is your ethical framework as you're moving into this? Because this is a technology that will provoke a lot of micro-ethical decisions. Just one tiny example, your avatar. Will it have a female voice or a male voice? Will it have a human voice or a robotic voice? Will it have a physical embodiment or not? Those decisions, there will be 50 of them moving forward. You want to take them centrally and not let every person in your organization make these decisions for you. So giant leaps forward over the past year have made it clear that Gen AI will create some extraordinary changes in the way we run businesses and the way we relate to customers. How are the winners staying ahead of the competition? Well, the winners are really tackling these five factors. One, when they're thinking of their roadmap, they're not thinking just about cost. They're really thinking about top line and innovation as well. Two, they're thinking about upskilling. How do they embark their teams? Three, they're thinking about cost management. How do I make sure that I set this up so that when everybody in my organization uses it, it will still be manageable <laughs> at scale? Four, what is the right approach to the ecosystem? This has been such a fast evolving ecosystem and nobody wins alone in tech. So you have to think thoughtfully of with whom you partner. And five, they bring the responsible AI question all the way to the top of the organization. 
Many businesses will already be familiar, of course, with artificial intelligence. They might already be using predictive AI, systems that use data from the past to predict what will happen in the future. But how is Gen AI different? So Gen AI is a very unique technology because it's a very fickle technology. Now, let me give you a very concrete example of that. If you go to any large LLM model available in the market and you prompt it twice with exactly the same prompt, it will give you two different answers. It's actually been trained for that. It's been trained to be divergent and creative. Now, that is a huge strength because when you use it for client engagement, customer experience, it feels so much more seamless and authentic. But if you're trying to predict, for example, stocks in supply chain, you want the same answer every time you run it, right? And you run the right answer. Right. So the question with generative AI is how to use it. And you want to use it to turbocharge your innovation, your customer experience. You want to use it to democratize intelligence in your organization. You want to use it to automate creative tasks like marketing, but you do not want to use it for anything that requires accuracy and deep number of mining. These are obviously very powerful tools, machine technologies that mimic advanced human powers. But what are the limitations and what are the risks? And how can businesses mitigate those? Well, limitations are really about using these technologies in the right context and with the right human supervision. So it was a bit what I was describing when you think about uh, generative AI. It is a fickle technology. It has good days and bad days. <laughs> it becomes much more like a human. So you wouldn't want to use it for applications where it's there to help you create new ideas, create new content. That's what it's good for. And when you do that and then you have a human supervising, you really limit the risks. The other thing I want to stress is, for me, there's a really big ethical discussion that is not going on. That is, how about we live if we live in a world where all avatars are female? Which is what is happening today. If you think of all the virtual voices and virtual representations out there, we tend to lean towards female quite a bit. So I, I wish there was a more practical thinking of diversity in virtual representation. Now, BCG is on the front line advising and supporting companies that are implementing generative AI in their businesses. What are the most promising implementations you've already seen? Well, I would just want to give you my favorite example. Uh, it was early January at CES, Nicola Hieronymus, who's the CEO of L'Oreal, uh, revealed on the main stage Beauty Genius. Beauty Genius is a fully personalized beauty assistant. So basically, you wake up in the morning and say, hey, Beauty Genius, I have an interview today. I want to look the part. What should I wear? And it's going to give you your own recommendations. Now, we helped build that tag. And I think it's a great example of how you can use generative AI way beyond productivity to really unlock a lot of value for your clients and customers. Well, Jessica, let's end with the future. Gen AI is already in the public consciousness. Many people have an idea of what it can do right now, but what's next and where can it go? Well, I actually think there have been three ages of AI, and we are only in age two. <laughs> Be ready for that. But no, so age one was actually what I call predictive AI. So everything that was the machine learning models, uh, processing hard numbers and getting us to statistical outcomes. Second age is generative AI. That's what we're in right now. So it's about creation of content, imagery, videos, tags, all of these uh, great uh, pieces of content that we are starting to experience. And age three will be interactive AI. That will be AI that you don't need to prompt anymore. It actually understands by itself what could be the next action that it could take, and that would power autonomous agents that could really enhance our day-to-day -day life. Jessica, I've learned so much. Thank you so much for explaining all of this to us. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thanks for coming.